As beautiful as modern game consoles and computers are, there's just always been something that stuck with me about the devices from like the late 80s, early 90s. They were always plasticky, a lot of times they were beige, the cartridges had a feel in your hand. It was just really iconic, and this project is my love letter to that type of design and, and that type of device. So let's, uh, let's make our own. So how do you actually make a make a game console? We know we need the outside case, like the shell. Then we need cartridges that actually hold the games. We need the electronics inside that actually like are the computer. And then we need the software that kind of ties it all together. We know starting out the heart of this device is going to be a framework motherboard. If you're not familiar with Framework, they're a laptop company that makes devices that are designed to be reused and upgraded. And one of the things you can do is replace the entire motherboard. And when you do that, you get what is functionally a standalone computer out of your old motherboard. So in this project, we're gonna take a motherboard that Framework provided me and turn it into a standalone game console. So everything we're building from this point on, we're kind of designing around that motherboard. So that plus nostalgia, plus the practical things we actually want this device to be able to do, that's gonna guide us through this whole quest. So let's dive in. The case. Creating the physical case is gonna require two completely different skills. The first is designing it, and the second is fabricating it. These two steps are really intertwined because we need to know what we're gonna make something out of in order to design in a way that we work around the restraints of those materials. If you look at the world around you, almost everything is made of multiple materials. So I wanna do that same thing here. We don't wanna just 3D print, we don't wanna just laser cut. We wanna use a mix of materials so everything is being used to the best of its ability. With these ideas in the back of my head, I went into Tinkercad, which is a tool for, I think, grade school children to learn basic 3D modeling. And I think I got to a design that invokes that nostalgia, but still feels a bit modern. For the final case design, I got to use a few different materials. I would have liked to use more, but we're working with the tools I have here. So it's made up of four 3D printed components, two acrylic boards, which are used to hold the motherboard in place and also give a mounting point for the 3D printed components. Then we have a metal back plate, and then we'll add some LEDs, some rubber feet, a button, make it all feel a bit more varied so it doesn't just feel 3D printed. It doesn't just feel 3D printed. These words seemed simple when I said them, and when I dreamed of this project, the idea of polishing a piece to the point where it did not look like a 3D printed piece of plastic seemed possible, but now after countless hours of sanding and painting, I have realized just how hard it is to get the finish I wanted. I sat there painting and then sanding, painting and then sanding. Seconds turned into hours, hours into days, days into weeks, weeks into years, and before I knew it, I was an old man with an unfinished project. But then a flash of inspiration. In my ear I heard a whisper, make it used. It's supposed to be old, a scratch or a dent is completely fine. Just as I had this revelation I felt a tug on my shoulder. like that, I was back. So I figured instead of beating myself up trying to get the absolute perfect finish, we just accept the scratches and the nicks and say, you know, this thing is supposed to be old. Of course it's not going to be in perfect shape. Regardless of which finish we go with, there is one component which will need to be sanded and painted, and that is the cartridge bay. Because the cartridge comes in contact with the 3D printed part, we need to make sure that it's nice and smooth so it's not grating either physically and damaging the part, or emotionally and just losing that tactile sense that's so important to this project. Oh, that's good. While we're here thinking about the cartridge bay, let's take a moment and figure out how our cartridges are gonna work. The carts. 
We want our cartridges to work just like old video game cartridges, which means we'll store data on the cartridge, it'll be loaded up, and that'll play the game or the movie or whatever. To do that, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can just go use some off-the-shelf parts and get creative to get the vibe that we're looking for. And the core off-the-shelf parts we're gonna be building around are just a micro SD card and a micro SD card reader. I worked with my brother to design a custom PCB that takes a micro SD card and breaks out the pins onto an edge connector so it feels like an old game. Then to actually use that cartridge, all we need is a drive bay that takes those pins, routes them back into the shape of a micro SD card, and then loads that through our SD card reader. This setup worked really well because as far as the computer is concerned, all we're doing is inserting a memory card into an SD card reader. We've just built out this shell around it. Another iconic element of old cartridges is their beautiful full color labels. So I wanted to make sure I designed the cartridge to be small enough that I could print full labels on my tiny pocket die sublimation printer. There's only a couple other hardware elements in this entire build, so let's dive into... The Electronics. For the other miscellaneous electronics, all we need are the ports on the back, and then the power button and the various LEDs. The ports on the back are super simple. All we need is an off-the-shelf USB-C hub, we print a bracket, we mount it to that backplate. Easy. The power button and LEDs are actually a little bit more complicated. Because the framework motherboard doesn't have any normal hardware I.O., we can't just wire up an LED directly to it. What we need is an intermediary board. So I just bought the smallest, cheapest Arduino compatible board I could find, wired up the pins to that, and now I can control the LEDs. Uh, ground traffic, this is flight AP1112112. Uh, we just got control of the LED, permission to uh, turn the LED on. Uh, permission granted. Uh, sounds good, ground control, I'll turn turning that LED on right now. Uh, LED turn on. Thank you, ground control. Have a wonderful day. Uh, you too. Safe flight. The framework board has four USB-C ports. We need those for the cartridge, we need it for the HDMI, basically everything. So I got these little adapters which will route them back inside, and then I could glue those to the inside of the case and mount any extra electronics I needed on the inside of the case shell. When I slide the sides of the shell back on top of the motherboard, these USB-C ports make contact, and as a result, all of the electronics are immediately hooked up. At this point, our hardware is pretty much done, and we can move on to... The software. <laughs> There's really not a ton of software in this project. Because this is a normal computer on the inside, we can just install a normal operating system, tweak the UI a bit, set the background, set it to auto login, all these things that you would expect from a game console. Then with our Arduino board, we can go and set it up so that it controls the LED, so that depending on the status of the computer, if it's loading a cartridge, we can have it blink, or when it's on, it's solid, etc. The only actually complicated part about this is making the cartridges automatically run when you put them in. Most operating systems don't like that because there's viruses that people put on flash drives and you plug it in and you get a virus. So we need to go kind of recreate that functionality. And then we also want it so when you tap the power button, it gently exits whatever the cartridge is doing. So if it's a movie, it stops playing. If it's a game, it'll quit the game. Luckily, I already did almost all of this for another project. So I can copy over a bunch of that code and I'll have a really good base to work off of. But with that, we're pretty much done and we can go into the final assembly.
All of the console is totally usable now. It's not 100% complete. I had to leave off the status LEDs in the top left corner because I didn't get the LEDs that were the right size and time. And then there's these two ports on the front right. I haven't talked about them because I just can't decide what I want to do with them. I thought maybe I'd put an IR receiver behind them so I could use a TV remote and watch movies. I was thinking maybe I could make custom adapters that mounted on the front that let you use classic video game controllers. I don't know. I'm just going to leave them as is. Post it below if you have a great idea about what we should use those ports for. I'll do a Q&A in a couple of weeks. If you have any questions or thoughts or anything, post them down below. I'll talk about them when we do that. Otherwise, I'll link all the files for this, all the 3D models and stuff down below. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. Okay.